So, Yama today. <laughs> Yama g'day everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the round table. I'm Luna. And this week on our table we have Sharon, Jules, Malia, Connie, Donnie and Bernays. And we might have some guests drop in later at the end of the conversation. And tonight, tonight's menu we have Where is the Centre of View? No, it's not a place where, a building where you go, it's not a, that kind of centre. It's the centre of you, the being, where do you reside within yourself? So we live in the strangest lives at the moment in history, and technology, work demands and the mishmash of weirdness present in today's world. We play different parts in our daily lives, from work mode to parent, carer, family, recreation, so when we're alone, what part do we play? Where do we reside within ourselves? Do we reside in the centre or do we move into certain positions? And what is the preferred mode of being? And what difference does it make when we move to the centre of ourselves? And why aren't we taught about these things? Some people live their whole lives never finding the centre of themselves. And what happens to our energy when we don't come from the centre of ourselves? And what happens when we do? So we're going to look at this today. Um, not many people talk about this and I think it's very important because living in the centre of yourself is be a balanced way of being just and you haven't done nothing yet. So has anyone got want to comment straight away or you want me to really yarn on a little bit about it? <coughs> Everyone's muted up so I'm going to keep, call I'm going to keep talking. So the centre of you. So the many things that we face in our lives um emotionally mentally and physically if you've ever taken time just a second to note where you are when these things happen you'll find that you're not actually in the center of you you're in a part of you um that's dealing with the problem um we've just learned to adapt to these things in life as they've been thrown to us and no one's ever seen, said to us hey when you stand in the middle of yourself and you're balanced and you deal with these things it's a whole different ball game and perhaps some people are doing it and don't even realise. So we're going to, we, this is what I want to talk about. Do, are we doing it in a natural way? Is it being disrupted by the world we're living in at the moment and the extra stuff that we have to deal with? Has it always been um, not there for most people? Um, this is what I want to find out. So let's have a look. Uh, anyone want to comment now? <laughs> I will. I actually, I was actually going to jump right in and I answered with a GIF and you didn't see it in time before you, before you started commenting. So I will jump, I, I will jump in. Um, a lot of this is, well, it is going to be coming from, from my point of view, because you asked the question, where's the center of you? If you, I had a thought and I came to this with a clean slate in the past, like, five minutes before we started, it kind of made sense to me. So if you look at just a normal person from head to toe, you would kind of think that the center, most people would consider the gut the center, but I'm not like most people. And my center, what I where I find balance and where I find a lot of my strength um between between the head and the heart is the throat that's where that's where my center is it, it helps having my center there it helps me think and then think with the head and the heart but speak with passion and i realize that that's where my power comes from my voice Cool, Jules, and I'm sorry I didn't see your little gift with the kitten ready to put his foot on the buzzer and go. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So, um, but I did also have other other questions like came to mind. Um, what is the purpose of calling center? As, well, we know what's the difference between a center, the C E N T R E as in a shopping center or a center of this, it, is there some kind of word hijacking going on or an attempt to? Yeah, I'd say so because just the word center 
you want to go to the middle. Birds are calling in the background. Um, yeah, it is a trick word. Oh, thank you for bringing it up and thank you for kind of taking Polly's corner seat. Um, yeah, shopping centre. Yeah, you're right there, Jules. That's a trick, isn't it? Because unconsciously we would go there because we should be in the centre of ourselves and they keep us away from there. And distracted at the centre. Oh, how does NACI say it? The powers that should not be, the advertising people that want to make money at you, off you. You know, they okay, don't want you to sit at home in the centre of yourself, all balanced and happy, enjoying the things you like. They want you well, to go and buy stuff. Well, agenda is about a whole different thing. It's about making money. We're just things that consume to them. So... A yes. company wouldn't have their center is greed mm. and the bottom line penny. And that's a bottomless pit. Like, but some people are like that. They want they'll go and buy a heap of stuff from the shops and feel fulfilled. Um, but as we know, that's only temporary, and then a couple of weeks later they have to go and do it again. But they're not fulfilling themselves properly. In the, they've got a hole in the centre that they can't fill up with material things. So they try to. We're, you know, we've all done that, man. Even I have. I've gone and bought a dress to make myself feel better. Wore it a couple of times and then gone, now what? I still don't feel better. Let's do something else. Um, so instead of going to the shopping centre, I went to the centre of me and sat on the grass out in nature and filled it up with other stuff that sustained me. You know what I mean? Yes. The, the world I was talking about, it's not like they, they don't think of those things, that kind of stuff. They just want to, like you said, consume, consume, consume. Like an endless fire pit and you've got to keep feeding wood. You know, yesterday when I read today's topic, I always just, like, instead of overthinking whatever first comes to me, I like just say it in my mind. And the center of me means the throne or the seat of my affections, where I invest my energy, my love, my time. That's the center of me and it is connected to the Holy Spirit and to Christ and it's all connected and that's my center but i have to put a big butt in there it, it i started to think back even as a child and i always had a lot of quiet like just sitting under a tree that's it doing nothing else sit under a tree and look at the leaves and blow in the wind and the real sky. Back then we had a actual clouds. And anyway, I just thought about the center and I think if we have room to grow, our center shifts as we develop and grow, but there is a part of us that's aware of our center. Yes. But maybe not. Maybe I just assume that other people are aware um, of what's most important, what where they live and move and have their being. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm similar. I assume people understand these things. Um, and then I think, well, maybe they don't, so maybe I should talk about it. <laughs> And if they do understand it, good, we can enrich, enrich it more. I was uh, looking at definitions because it's hard to put this into words, but I like this one. When you're connected to source, things just go right for you. You feel good. Your manifestations flow with ease. In this state, you also tend to get more guidance from the universe. And I think that's what being centered is. And I think about the Jedi Knights. You guys know how much I love that. 
I always feel like that, you know, that was such a good example. Well, of course, Christ would have been a better one, but just in their power, in their calmness, in their, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In their, you know, they were confident, confident in what they were, who they were, and what they were doing, but also in their power. They they didn't lash out. They didn't, you know, they were calm and they brought calm to the situation. I think we're at our best when we're connected. You, I think so too. Yeah, like Zena. Exactly, Jules. Exactly like Zena. <laughs> Power under restraint. Yes, Connie, I agree. That's the first time I ever heard that. Someone said to me, do you know what the definition of humility is? And I said, no, what is it to you? And they said, it's power under restraint. I mean, you have the power to do something, but your higher self just says, no, that's not right. And you restrain that, even though yeah. you know you could do it. Well, yeah, because sometimes. Yes, I mean that's similarly. I that's how I kind of get that reassurance reassurance from a higher power. I'll I'll drift off to off to sleep, and I'll ask a question. If I if this is something of interest for me to look into, let me see a car, a license, a red car with a New York license plate in the next however long it takes and the next it, however long it takes for you to want a, an answer like let me see a red car with New York license plate in the next couple of days if uh, I'll count them and then if they equal a two or if it's two then likely that's a path I'll take or random things like, if I want to do this, let me get in the car and let me hear an artist play it randomly. Um, uh, Donnie said something earlier in the chat room about find the center of yourself, you got to find yourself first. And I actually never thought about that because some people have lost themselves when there's nothing worse than feeling like you've lost yourself <clears throat> but i suppose if you want to find yourself find finding the center as the target would be the quickest and easiest way there <laughs> it, i could explain it but it would take it would take an hour maybe an hour and a half is that it's that's the entire reason how i ended up here is to center myself and when i when me and Luna first yar started yarning, I mean, it was just something that kept me coming back, and and then she the whole Xena thing. I had never seen an episode of Xena, and it's been out for twenty some odd years until this year. And then everything that happened in that is like, yep, I feel the warrior spirit. This, this, this. Who? doesn't like a strong woman, but a woman that not only has good relationships with her friends, but also realizes the devastation that she's done and she's going back to make amends to try to make her life better. Correctly, she's trying to help those people she hurt, but also forge a good path. And she has no problem picking up the sword and going into battle to help her people. I mean, I've learned a lot of spiritual wisdom from some of the quotes and the music that it's the percussion and the drums it, and the ancestral stuff. It's um, it's what helps. It's what it, it's it's where I find balance, balance from the real world and the balance of personal private time with friends. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up Zena because listening to everyone talk up to now, I'm thinking, all right, how do I explain the, where I, my centre is? And as I was looking at it and I went to my centre, 
that's what what came up was a warrior thing because when you're in battle or you go to battle you need to virtually see behind yourself you know, beside you need to see in front behind and on both sides of you virtually simultaneously the only way to do that is to be standing in the middle in the center of you and then you can feel everything around you um, and while you were talking and I was thinking that that's what was going in then you started talking about Xena and I'm thinking yep I'll have to mention this now um, and if you yeah it it's the it, it's the it's the the feeling it's the taking it day by day putting one foot forward having the strength to get through the day and if times get tough you have your armor on your armor on and your defense and your guard up and you just keep moving forward and then when that's over with in the real world when you have to swashbuckle your way through chaos and covid and mandates you come home you relax you spend quality quality time with the right people and at the end of the day it's a good vibe you wake up and you do it again and then the times that you get together you just appreciate them and that that gift of friendship kind of helps balance me in this crazy world talking with normal people brings balance and helps center me normal people where do you find those yeah. don't call me normal i feel insulted <laughs> are you talking about us are you talking about us <laughs> well Teasing you, I mean, I guess, and, and I guess I say normal because I see I see how everything has gotten crazy, but to them it hasn't. So I kind of sympathize with them, I guess, and call them normal people because they're clueless. They don't know. Um, so you really okay? So uh, not all kidding aside, you talk to them and you feel better. No, I don't feel better. I just treat oh. them like I would treat everybody else. I don't talk to them. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, you talk to them? Um, yeah, no, okay. Uh, I, I, Sorry, some, of them, some of them, some of them, some of them I love, okay? Because they're just beautiful people. It doesn't matter that I don't agree that that we don't talk about certain things you know what i mean like i i just yeah. love many of them i mean I there are some of them that will literally come up and say i not you don't even say hello they're like i'm fully vaccinated and i've had a booster right Good for you. it's like exactly. okay yeah do you that's you do you want a medal yeah yeah we should get medals and hand them out <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, oh, the cheek is I think to my, talking to people like if you're if you're able to actually talk to people that you know are going through what we're going through, whatever mm -hmm. that is, to the level we're going through, that is a blessing. Okay, but nice. Uh, Come on. I, I can talk with people, and I can I can in just <clears throat> casual conversation I can tell if they're receptive or not, and if they are, then I let them lead, and I just validate what they say, and then they think, right. and then it enlightens them. Agreed. But come on, Benaz, you're checking out some good stuff here in the uh, chat room. We'd like to hear some of this, you know, like. Uh, I don't have a son. <laughs> 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 a soft fuzzy core center no yeah it, what we're seeing now what's being pushed into the psyche of some is that they must identify their center immediately to you well i'm sexually this way and i have the shot and i got a double vax by so and so uh, i i come uh, you know, I was born in the 50s, raised through the 60s and 70s, and it was, hi, how are you doing? It wasn't, you know, you didn't tell your life story coming out of the hoop. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and those type of people would walk up to you back then, a few, you know, would t come in and tell you the life story, and it's, oh, hi, how are you? And then you kind of wanted to move away. 
<laughs> but it, it's become normality in today's world. It's become to keep people passive and happy. Uh, I'm I'm gonna just be quiet for a no, minute. No, it's so true. Don't be quiet, Bernays. It's true. Sorry for laughing. It was a funny laugh because it's so true. I just found it so funny. It's true, man. What you're saying. I yeah, I agree with Luna. I don't I don't think that's their center. I mean, if somebody says to me, "I got the jib jab," one, two, three, or five, or ten, that's not their center. No. That's just an activity, right? I mean, and a center to me is. You know, I had a meaningful talk or I had to make a tough decision and it changed my life or, you know, I I actually woke up and there were some deep thoughts. Like this last week, one of my bosses got in an accident and she made some comments about how she was so grateful everybody was alive and that the universe was talking to her. Me, that was actually coming from her center then, right? It was like, wow. I got a message from the universe, maybe it was to slow down, you know, or, you know, to me, that's, that's deep, you know. I mean, and, and it is true. Um, I didn't start to find my center until, until I had lost death in the family. I mean, it, in a way, it kind of feels like a relief because I felt tethered and now I'm my own person whatever foot whatever whatever i do i do and i know that there's a consequence if things go go awry and i have to keep myself in balance to be my bet to uh, it's kind of like it it's weird i i have that that checks and balance system so what i'm hearing here is and it's true what you're saying a lot of people but i am them. feeling balanced a lot of and i have been seeing a lot of ladybugs lately nice a lot of people have to be thrown up against a brick wall before they bounce back and go all right i'm gonna i'm gonna find the center of me living that and their lives change they find more depth in their life that's what i found something will scare them into it to get to I have to become my own person and i have never been as content as i have been in the past year or so um i was looking at when we were talking and benay said stuff uh they were showing me a rose so when you see a rose from the top and it's a little bud you think the center is in the middle right and you can see the center of that little bud but then as it opens the center starts to shift because now the center is going actually down into the flower as it opens and then when it does open you see that little bit in the middle that all the bees go and sit on so mm -hmm. so the view of center actually is shifting because what you think the center is actually the outside petals as the outside yeah, petals yeah. open up, you see another centre, which is the next layer of the inside petals. And as they open up, and then you get right down to the centre when it's fully open. And it reminded me that when we are in centre, that's how it works. We're in the centre, everything's working around us. But perhaps some people only see the tips of the petals. That's true. kind of reminds me of... The hibiscus flower, the way that it opens up, but it doesn't have as many layers. Mm. And then, that's why I brought this discussion up today, because we need people need to look deeper into our reality. We are our reality, by the way. We, what we create and bring out into the world and the energy that we um, take in and put out makes this reality. And if... I agree with you yeah. 100% with that. And I always felt if we always work more from the centre of ourselves, the reality, well, couldn't say it'd be better because some people are self-centred and they only think of themselves. So when they're in their centre, it's only them in it. You know what I mean? They're not thinking like what yes. others do. We have to allow for that. But good on them. They're still in, working from the centre. That's how our energy works. I'm going back to your going back to your statement, Luna. Do you think are you seeing, feeling, thinking that right now 
as we go into this next i think we're hitting another personally think we're hitting another layer oh yeah we're having to go deeper or that more is going to be expected of us yep i agree yep i think something happened i think something has happened i would say the last couple of weeks yep the nose has got it there centered like a battery he's put up that picture what the energy vortex around us yes we because I, I feel like last weekend i literally spent the whole two days in bed i, I wasn't i just was so exhausted yep yeah so everyone tired. i spoke yes. to was like that sharon everyone well, not, was yourself included tired last week. Mm-hmm. it was like someone drained our batteries and yes Yes, and I I just needed to be quiet. I just needed. I read. I read. I read an entire book. It was you know a, a stupid fun book, and I just I just you know I got up and did what I had to do, and then I went back to bed. But you know, it was great when you need to fill yourself up with stuff. You can't do it when you're full. You got to empty yourself out. I Perhaps think. Creator emptied us out so we can fill ourselves up entirely by good with good stuff because of what's coming up. We all know something's coming. doesn't matter what you believe. You can feel it. There's something yes. coming. Um, yeah, and I, I feel... I think it started. Yes, it started already. It's, it started a while ago. We're just starting to feel the more effects of it now. I believe the more dire things become, people will either go further into denial... Right. So that they don't have to go through the transition and painful discomfort of opening their eyes and hearing with their ears. Or it's pushing us further into the light. We want the truth. We don't want to be distorted or we don't want to be deceived. So I know I'm talking a whole lot more to God, it's like an all day ongoing conversation. I don't stop, it's not even formal. It's just like, all right, Lord, I just read this. Now what about this? You know, how long are you gonna allow this to go on? This is such an abomination. I can get very, like almost hating it the darkness the it thing oh, don't do that that is that's what, that's what it wants you to do that's what it wants you to do get you out of center right if you start thinking like that you're not going to be in your center anymore you're going to be over in your anger spot which is probably your stomach like people store their anger in different places no it's a passion yeah but you, I'm not angry don't but it's a passion. Angry. I yeah, love it more. <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure. Maybe that is why I have so much difficulty keeping balance. I'm very sensitive, I, and I, I can be on emotional overload and not know it for a minute. Yeah. Until one last thing happens, and then I'm like, whoa. Why did I just react rather than respond? I mean, I can lose my shit. Yeah, we all can. We can all catch on fire, <laughs> Connie. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, I I think that. Um, I, I yeah I, I I my experience of last week is that I think for me, you know, it's almost to the point where. You know, things come up and you just think, I can't do this one more day. You know what I mean? Like you just, it just, or, or you're, you're not going to tolerate certain crap or you're not going to pretend anymore. Like there's, there's some pretending, people can't expect you to keep pretending. You know, like that's how I feel. It's like, don't, don't, don't expect me to pretend with you. I don't recommend to pretend. Pretend's not good because you can't. It's uh, if oh. you you get tired and you can't hold it up anymore. It's not true. Mm. It's not I being rigid, you know. Yeah, pretend. I don't think we're, 
The only time you should I pretend is when you're playing with the kids or you're having a game, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually think we're going to be able... You know, pretending is like holding up a pretend wall. Yep. I don't think we're going to have the energy to be able to hold the wall up for them anymore. No. People that need us to hold the wall, it's like... Like, this last week, this experience I had, this person is like... You know, I think they got to see what happens when you make a decision towards people and you don't know, you know, you, you, you've been off the hook and then now you get to see the mirror of your decisions. That's what they got to see. Mm. So I got to feel it. It's mm. like, wow. Yeah. Oh, well, I felt the rug. I felt the rug of my life get pulled out from under me. That's what happened last week. Boom. Whoa. Sharon, I'm yes. sorry. I don't understand. Can you go back to the mirror part? Um, what I was trying to say is that I was a mirror for them for a decision that they made. They, they got to see that they got this they didn't get they're not off the hook you know how sometimes people make a decision and uh -huh. there's nothing holding them accountable there's nothing coming back to them they get oh, yes. off scot-free yes this person didn't get off scot-free that's why i got to feel it on my end so it's like wow wow oh. that's all i'm saying i think the universe in my life anyway is like okay girl move it Wow. So I was I think I was preparing when I was in bed all weekend for the week that was coming. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I had a tough week. I was tired last week and had a tough week this week, but I actually feel pretty good now. Um Yeah, today's okay. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Ew, I mean I, I I I was I was ill last weekend and all this week I've been uh, working mandatory six well not mandatory, but anything over 40 hours is overtime. So I worked like 50 hours this week, came home and did all my chores, and I feel good. <laughs> so I want to jump backwards a little bit because Benay's put something in there a uh, little while ago, and it obtained to you what happens when we don't work from our centre. Because here we are, everything we've talked about is... We, things that knock us out of our centre as well. Let's talk about that because here we are saying we had a tired, we're tired, we had a tough week and we got come to this day where we could get uh, settled down for a minute and find our centres again and now we're feeling good. So what kind of things knock us out of our centre? Like, oh, I, I, have, I have a list. For, for me personally, modern music mainstream media if you are ab absorbing it and if you listen to it and you're persuaded by it, it it gets you out of balance or could get you out of balance i find you can get if you're, out, if you're out of balance it's hard to to get to your it's hard to get to your center yeah and that, well, that's what I say. That's what knock you out of balance. Negativity. Someone can shoot you with a negativity bullet, um, and that'll hurt and knock you out of balance because you'll go to where it hurt instead of staying in the centre. You'll you'll uh, react to it instead of acting. I think you're yeah. the right, right way. Walking into a room and feeling mm -hmm. the neg the negativity. I found. Um, environment like if you go to another environment and it's not comfortable and there's things there that you find uh not your thing not good for you if you stay in that environment too much i think you you'll start going out of shape unless you can have trained yourself to stay in center no, no matter what well look luna was, were you referring to where i said the planet's Life, um, but you're the center, and the planets circle you. Oh. They'll pull on you. The gravity will pull on you. Everything. It's almost electric universe. While well, we are electric, yep. But at at points we're gonna we're gonna be pulled and stretched. Yep. And, and everything else because of 
of just how we are beings and 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 what affects us the energy off of others affect us it, would you say Bernays is like um say we come up against a person because we're all like magnets like you were saying right um positive and negative ions and all that if we come up against a person with an opposing energy do, is it like they if they're like a magnet to the negative and it, it'll suck us to it or well, do you think it'll put a hole in us I, and push us the other way like how do you think it works well if you uh, if you think about any 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 fields the fields will create their own pattern now how much that will so I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think you should be able to repel anybody's gravity by your own inner strength, by your own field. How far out of yourself, how many layers out is that person affecting you coming in? If you allow it to come all the way into your center, then that person's going to affect your feelings. But if you are able to project your own self a little bit farther out. I'm not saying that your ego must rule the world. I'm saying that you must have self-assurance in your own self, in your own thought, in how you're addressing a situation that you're secure enough to interchange with that, that gravity, that pull, that interchange that is trying to either improve you or steal you or or vampire you whatever the case may be that's a xena moment i mean you walk into situations and like you're saying i totally get it i mean you have your energies and as long as you're not persuaded by them everything's good but when you are confronted with those it's your armor you know, i mean you're you're walking through it unknown you have you have your your armor and your weapon because of that but if it's there if you need it but warriors never set out to purposely kill it was always to protect so you're gonna make sure that everything's good and then move on so i got another question so anyone here were you taught about the center of you and people coming and things happening to try and um, knock you out of center and you have to become resilient to it. Did anyone teach you about that or was it something that you just learned as life walked with you? It's just something that I learned after I grew up. I, had a, I, had a, I, had a, I came from a pretty, as, as most people, dysfunctional, no boundaries and I had to learn about all that stuff when I grew up. Right. So I don't, I don't think, I, I, I think a time zone is the family, you know, my parents never learned any of that junk. You know what I mean? They yeah. didn't know that. I think, um, what do you think, think the people in my time zone, most of the ones I met, they had to learn, they had to learn it when they grew up. Um, why do you think they were, weren't taught it? And do you think there was a time in this world where we were taught these things? Yeah, uh, I would guess, I would guess, well, I would think that the people that, you know, when you talk about indigenous people, they have the connections to the planet, Earth, to Mother Earth, right? When I listen to you guys talk, when I listen to Nese talk, I think when you guys had this absolute connection to the Earth, and then you had this sense of balance. Yeah. Yeah. I know we had it, but I'm asking about you. <laughs> okay. What? Say that again. I, I said I know we had it because I'll just sit here and start raving on about it. But um, I'm sure that it was somewhere else as well. Like it's got to be. It has to be. Like, isn't there Not a time when? Um, I don't know. We're going to go back thousands of years? We, we, I think that's where I'm looking. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm looking, going, oh, we're going back further now. Um, <laughs> isn't, isn't it easier for the powers of B to be able to control us if we're out of balance? Oh, yes. It, exactly. I was just getting ready to comment on that. It's like we've had the, we've had balance. We were centered. 
so long ago and then the powers that be i mean they indoctrinated us they they put us through school where they basically governed us they were our parents right. yeah that gave me a funny thought as you were saying that all jewels is on balance balance it's a funny word we've been balancing ever since we chose to stand up so, yeah. so even the gravity of the world has to keep us balanced and i'm i'm get i'm catching a little bit of that right now with the NIP system but so i'm getting a real lesson taught to me at the same time here too as we're all as we're all going through this other crap so yeah. it, it's quite it's quite interesting well, I mean, does anybody come here healthy? If you're healthy and, you know, you're kind of like an ascended master, you don't really have to be here, right? Does everybody here have to learn a lesson? We all have to, I mean, in other words, if we were balanced and whole, kind of like Christ person or an ascended master, I would imagine we wouldn't incarnate, certainly not at the level we're at. So maybe at the level we're at, well, I'll speak for myself here, the level I'm at, Learning to be balanced and centered is a part of my learning lesson. Yeah. I reckon this place is a challenge for any enlightened being, no matter whether you're on stage one kindergarten or university professor, this place will test the best, I reckon. And if you were that high up, I've, I'd imagine you wouldn't spend a lot of time in places where we are. <laughs> you tend to keep yourself away from things. Well, I don't know. I hope so. Uh, Who knows? Was if, point. if I evolve, I do not want to come back here. I said that, and I still, I'm back again. Hey, I, I, I said that I'm going back there, and then they approached me and went, "We really need you to do this job." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't want to go back, but I'm here." Mm. Like I said to Malia once, I gave up a cushy job to come here. <laughs> it felt like I gave up a, cu a cushy vacation to come back here. Yeah. It was like, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm happy. No, 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 we need you to come. No, 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 yeah, no, no, I'm exactly. happy. Exactly. That's what it feels like. And we all know that oh. in our, you know, when we're standing in our centre, we all understand those things. They just, it's just like, yeah, okay, and we move along smoothly. Yeah. You understand why you're here. Hmm. That's it. You just understand. You got. You're going through it, yep. and nobody's getting out alive. Nope. <laughs> I reckon we're actually sleeping. I reckon because life's very short. When you look at the yeah. the span of everything in creation, yeah. yeah, and it's like, are we just having a night like a sleep? Are we in a sleep room somewhere? <laughs> we're in a sleep room, and we've gone to sleep that's what people say yeah it's like that we us in a world of sleepers we're the ones who just nap yeah cats got it made <laughs> talking about animals when you look at nature they you don't see them getting fallen out of center it's like mm -hmm. theirs is permanently fixed you know um they adjust back very well you can knock them out of center and they're like back in it like nothing happened children are a bit like that too <laughs> They don't. They don't have to. They don't have to punch a time clock. They don't have to. They don't have to balance finances. They don't. A lot of them don't have. Don't have companions that they to contend with. I mean, they're they're simple. They have no like. They have not. They have body time, but they don't look at a clock. They have all these things to keep them to keep them perfectly centered. Yeah. Um, when I first started today's talk and I said the centre of you isn't a place where you go, an actual building, I wish it was and me and my friend actually wanted to open a place like that and call it the centre of you and have it so people can just come and find themselves, centre themselves, strengthen themselves and then go back to the madness. Um, it's still a dream. One day, you never know. Sounds like it's the perfect yoga place kind of but there's more to it because not everyone can bend and stretch right <laughs> um yeah you have to look at them things some people have a hard time walking upstairs so you wouldn't put them through that finding the center of yourself is a lot more gentler <laughs> 
unless you're an avid exercise person and we can train your body until you put yourself in the center. <laughs> That's easy. Just set up a PP room in the corner and a lot of people will be of use to that. That's where they'll find the <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to tether them so they don't get lost. <laughs> <laughs> We say wake up and they go, no, I don't want to, (laughs) because it's really falling asleep. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, so the centre of you, where are we at now? Um, So we've talked about the things that knock us out, and that can range from negativity to having a hard day at work. And what I want to add to that, there are some people that deliberately, deliberately go about life Finding people that are happy in their centre and everything's worked for them, they shoot them because they can't bear... I think them people have not have no centre, maybe. I don't know, but I've seen it happen and they don't like people when they're in centre and they knock them out on purpose for whatever reason I don't want to know. Um, but I have seen people like that. Whether they're even doing it consciously, I don't know. I've never stopped and asked them. And I've never observed it long enough to find out. You don't like standing in the mud too long, you end up sinking. Um, But you can call them negative people, whatever, but some of them aren't. They just suck the balance out of you, (laughs) so to say. Um, All right, where are we at? Uh, So do you think it's possible for someone to live their whole life and not ever find the center of themselves oh yes <laughs> i do heck yeah i mean i mean you just have to turn on tv and look at washington dc right? <laughs> <laughs> you have a whole stage full of them <laughs> they do it's no and i'm sure you have that over there in australia and every other country. oh yeah, yeah madness abundance of it mm-hmm. i think you know luna maybe the question is do they find value because if you find if you stand in your center i think there are things you have to give up have to give up control have to give up running the universe have to you have to turn it over to creator as you call them Mm -hmm. have to be willing to listen to creator you, you have to even know you're connected to Creator. Mm-hmm. There's so much knowledge much. you have to have within yourself and so much growth, I think, in order to stand in your power. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. I, I have a question. Oh, what, what would be behind them to stand there and mandate something upon the entire world that they would be so uh, i don't want to use the word insane but they they sure seem to be awful authoritarian in their manner of saying it what what is behind the door that they apparently know or fear that they would actually attempt to talk to us in that fashion. That is a good question. And my question, Bernice, in adding, or my comment adding to what you just said, are they being directed by beings outside of the human race? That that opens a real big door. Because yeah. are they beings that have been here for a long, long time? Are they beings that might have arrived just recently? Are they beings that just returned as, or possibly returning as others would believe? I believe that they, some of, some of them, they a lot of them have been here in the past. Some of them have left those that stayed they somehow went underground someone underground and some of them interbred and then i think some and i think from time to time they come back 
And I think they are coming back. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe the giants are coming back and going to eat us all. <laughs> I I think it's all but a fair question at the moment of when they are pushing a liquid liquid particle upon you to basically be in society. You're you're being asked to accept something that is chemically made, introduced into yourself to to be part of society. Now that. What society? Just that thought is kind of way out there in my book. What society? It is, but here's another way out there thought with with everything that's going on. It had to be last week or the week before. I caught a little bit of Clyde Lewis, and he was mentioning that basically everything that's going on, the terraforming, tying this vaccine into the, the Green New Deal. Or basically, possibly, the vaccine will help people be more tolerant of the food that's going to be coming. Yeah, that's that's all that. Taking taking that into effect, all the terraforming that's going on, I mean, there there is definitely an agenda for them for somebody else. I got the... When they're coming... I was going to say, I've got The Economist magazine, and they're predicting that maybe 30-35% vegetables and food will have an mRNA in it. You're sure absolutely correct, and that's in The Economist magazine. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to confirm what you're saying, Jules. No, I I agree with you. I saw that out of Australia, what the companies are going to start that type of farming down there where they're making giant plots. But the the question is is Europe says no to GMO, but that but their governments are locking down places and saying no, you're going to take this. The logic how 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 is one to stay centered when basically you got a comet streaking by your by your hip? I mean, it, it sounds like rounds coming down range at you. But they don't. They won't. They won't express why they don't want to say other than this COVID, which whatever they're producing doesn't seem to even stop. It seems to produce it even further. So, at some point, the the smoke screen's got to clear because I smoke good sativa, but I, I can't even keep up with this one because it. Is, this is some crazy MFers here. Yes, it is. That's that's why I always go for a good hybrid. <laughs> so what's at the center so of we, all that if, stuff? That's what if you at. go to what Luna, what you were saying is does logic have to be connected to being in your center? Mm-hmm. Well you are. When you're in your center you're all balanced, right? Your thoughts are balanced, your emotions yes. are all balanced, you you're calm and you're aware. Okay, you in tip top condition, so to speak. Um, I might be mentally, but I might not be physically. No, but it doesn't something, matter. Something tells you, me that uh, things aren't adding up. It doesn't matter about your physical because you know that um, your spirit can override that and you'll have super strength out of nowhere if you need it. Yeah, I mean, embracing duality will, will help keep centered and balanced well look at what i'm looking at is that with bad and light with dark so if i got a person and i take them out of their center and put them say in it will put them in fear doubt and what what else can we put them in to knock them out trauma yeah but uh lack as well right lack so instead of abundance lack um so we'll put them in that, and then we'll apply pressure on them to dance to society. Then it's going to be really hard to find your centre. Um, if they do that to you, we'll do that to the person for a while, um, and then you'll find that they're pliable. Whatever you want to do to them, they'll let you do it because they're so lost away from their centre and living. And like um, Benet said earlier, you end up creating a pattern. 
that that'll form a pattern and they'll just live in that pattern and it's easy for someone to come up and do whatever they want to that person because they're already living in fear and trauma and lack of and all that already you get the picture so it already puts them in a disor disoriented yep, state yep yep like i can't recognize this world anymore yep. or can you believe this i mean I say nothing shocks me anymore, but things still shock me. Uh, like, are you, am I really reading this? I, I, and I just shake my head, like, because it's surreal. All of it is. All of it. We've all been globally traumatized. All of us. Yes. Over and over I and over well again. Said and played okay. with you know you can okay. come out of your house now for two weeks up oh, there's five more cases back in your houses people and seeing elderly people beat and just i think i don't even i think the hard part much. yeah because there's those of us that don't buy into it right but what we're finding hard is looking at others that have been affected like i just said yeah, and we can't let that pull us out of centre because then we'll be someone will flank us, you know what I mean, if we're not looking. Um, I, I mentioned a few months ago that's going to be the hard part, how are we going to react in the future. Here, well, here we are um, and these things are happening. Um, we can't really do a lot about it because it's their choice each human being has the right to choose whatever they want even if they've been tricked into it yes you know we can hold a sign and go and you've been tricked but it's still their total decision whether they believe that or not so we have to yes. flounder around a bit helpless but don't let that take us out of center that's we don't want to be tricked either and that's the whole trick is to give up the center of you give up your strength stronghold so to speak so you can fall into that pattern of fear lack trauma and all that that they want you to be in um and succumb to it eventually because i'm seeing lots of people that i just answered my own question the other day i said why are these people falling that's why they're falling they're getting tricked into that pattern. And remember I've said once the fear gets in, you've got to get it out real quick. Otherwise it'll grow in there. It'll knock you out of centre. That's what it's all designed for. Take you away from what you know, from your centre stronghold and put you in fear. So, and if you want to add, put it to the body, where does fear reside in your body? Well, fear is like fire. It probably reside and it's poor, toxic. So it probably reside in your liver. Or your stomach, something like that. Um, I think this is the big lesson, Luna. I think that trying to stay in your center right now and trying to stay out of resentment or fear or anger, or, it, it, I think we're actually, that's where the learning and the lessons are going to come. There was something I wanted to share with you guys I heard today, which made sense and it was something I hadn't thought about. Someone was talking about how they're walking, they're just the same conversation, how they're walking through this. And they, he, he said, he felt like he had to take on some of the pain of this because otherwise he would be numb. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to walk through this numb. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really interesting comment, something I'm pondering, but it was very, very interesting. It, it is. I actually checked myself for that the other day, Sharon. I went, am I doing, am I being ignorant and numb and not, you know, just being stupid about this? And I checked myself and I thought, no, I'm walking strong. I'm just being strong because I'm still aware of it. I'm not just being numb and bumping into everything and not feeling it. I am feeling it. You have to check. Mm -hmm. And another one I did was, um, when I thought I was going numb, I'd go and pick up one of the cats and they'd give me a hug and five minutes of cat hugs, man, you're feeling <laughs> you're not numb anymore. <laughs> well, of course, cat purrs are the best. Cat purrs are like yeah. medicine, natural medicine. And, th and that yeah. brings me, what can we do mm -hmm. to stay in, stay in centre? Things like that. 
you've got to be aware of it first, yeah. right? So it pays yeah. to check yourself throughout the day when you're going through different situations, especially if you know you've got a tough one coming. Um, get you get it or get yourself ready and check it. Prayer, I think prayer, prayer, walking outside, you know, I think, I think going outside, if you can possibly leave all of the crap in your house, on your shoes, put it out or go barefoot, whatever is comfortable and go outside, even for 30 minutes, go outside. Don't take your phone, don't take any music, nothing, and just go outside, right? And have the direct connect to creator talk to creator that's what i that's that's been my big remedy every day i get out of this house go outside and i just talk to god yep i, I highly recommend that highly highly i found two was, some... it, was it connie who said she talks to god all day yeah amen yep, yep. <laughs> yeah because i'm thinking yeah i'll do that too i'm glad someone else does <laughs> I do. I have to go and I say it openly. I will say it openly too. Like, where was I the other day? I was in the shopping centre. Oh, that's right. Because I don't know if you know, but I'm looking up. I'm trying to. I'm helping look after my parents that are soon going to be living in spirit world. So um, mm. I was shopping. They need dietary stuff, and I was looking for this one thing at the shop. And I actually there was only one left when I got there. And I picked it up and went, thank you, Creator, and all the shoppers looked at me. <laughs> nice. But, but nice. I knew that Creator had kept it there for me because they were saying, don't worry, everything's going to work out fine. I'm like, rightio. And then I got there and I found the, that one item and it's like, oh, thank you, Creator. Uh, some people smiled. Well, being, some people looked Being good. thankful ain't a bad thing, Laura. Well, being a thankful person isn't, you know, uh, but – and. Like you said, you wonder if the people around you look at you and they, they, that, that's part of being centered. I'm sorry. No, that, that's right, Bernays. It is part of being centered. And now I find myself verbally expressing it. I don't really care what other people think about me. That's their thoughts, yeah. not mine. And they speak it to me really? as a different thing. What they think is their private thought, even though I can still hear them. <laughs> no, no, but... It's all good. Yeah. I think being being grateful is really good right now. If you can, if you can find something to be grateful for, yeah. um, it's easy to get caught up in the you know the like Connie said you know there's what the heck is happening kind of thing, and then you have to get focused back on the gratitude stuff. I I personally think it's just about minute to minute some days, right? It it's is. just minute to minute. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why yep. I said check yourself because sometimes I'll check myself and I'll, I'll go, oh, where am I? And first thing I'll do is smile. I'll just make a smile and I'll keep smiling and I'll feel that smile spread light through my body and then I'll go, oh, that feels better because um, for, for those moments I was slipping out, you know, just some other part of myself, um, worry, probably worry or, um, or fear. I didn't want to go there. Yeah, I just smiled and I keep smiling and then I felt the smile take me over and it was like, yep, that's it. That's just a simple way of doing it. Singing is another way. Going for a walk. Depends what it's available. Because sometimes I'm stuck in a place and it's like, oh, I really need to go outside, but right now I can't. What do I do? It's all armour of God. Everything you listed there is given to us by God. All that we can put on ourselves to protect ourselves from from all the gravity as I used it being pulled at our center. Yes. Thank you, Benaz. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. way of putting it because we all talk about the armor of God, but no one's actually described it. It must be the sativa. <laughs> <laughs> I can scripturally describe it, the armor. Please. Please. If I can remember, because to me it's just clothing yourself in the light, but it's the breastplate, the helmet of salvation, and Golgotha means place of the skull. So the battle is in our mind. So the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and we're hidden in the righteousness of Christ. 
and then our loins skirt about with truth. Um, the shield of faith to defend ourselves against the fiery arrows of the enemy and the sword of the spirit. It says, which the spirit yields. So that's the word of God. Hmm. Oh, and your feet shod with the peace of the gospel, the good news. <clears throat> Thank you for that like education, that. Connie. That was nice. Um, I always like, Very I've, nice. I've never read the Bible and I rely on my friends like Connie and I've got a few of them. Some have even gone to Bible college all their life and whenever I need to refer to anything, I love listening to what they got to say. Thank you, Connie. Again. Same here. I've, I've, got, I've got those kinds of friends and the topics of conversation we have are just endless. Guys, so, do you guys you, think that the ending is, is, okay, let me rephrase this. Do you feel like we have a shot during this time to take things in a positive way? Do you guys feel that way? Yes. Yes. That's I have what, hope every day. That's what we're supposed to be as doing. As long as somebody's heart is breathing, there is hope. Always. We're supposed to be going negativity. You want to control us? Well, cop a bit of this. And all together we stand up with positivity and like a big wave just going well, if over it was, the top of it. I'm, st I'm sorry to jump on you, Luna, but if it was going good, would we see what we're seeing on TV as... The oppression that we're seeing if it was going good for them it must be going good for us it's going good for us don't good. believe what you see on tv it's called propaganda well, <laughs> I, because, because what you're saying is because they're doubling and tripling down in their in their oppression exactly it, it, you know the whip is coming out more because it's being put away the flail is being used continuously almost now or the threat of the the fl the flail at any point, and it's not working anymore either. At, no, uh, it's correct. not. Correct. <laughs> all, of, all the fear shit. Right. People are tired of it. So remember uh, early in the conversation. Sorry, Connie. Remember early in the conversation we were talking about how some people get thrust up against the brick wall and then they fall in their centre. I think as a world, that's what we're doing. They've given us so much fear and flack and stick that if they're standing up going, I'm not afraid anymore, it's, if people are finding them sent, their centre out of the sheer meanness of what they're doing to us. Do you understand? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Right. So it's a simple way what else Aussies would say is when you flog a dog and you keep flogging it, it's going to get up and bite you. <laughs> so that's what they've done they've flogged us with fear and all that stuff and oh this is going to happen that's going to happen you're going to have none of this lack and all that everyone sat around for two years listening to it and they've all looked at each other and gone hang on a minute in reality this is what's happening but from what they're saying and doing this they're over it everyone's over it and through going through all that they've found their center and they're starting to stand up that's how I say it. Now they're going after our kids. And I have I have seen in this last six weeks, people are actually reacting to the fact that the children now, they're going after them openly. Finally, I'm seeing some reaction from the parents. Well, again, they have to be thrust up against the brick wall. Or, you know, being there. Oh, accident. Absolutely. It, it, it. If you say you were the good being against the dark being who's been running this world, you couldn't just rip the Band-Aid off <laughs> until a point where you've pulled the Band-Aid off to let people know it's going to hurt. <laughs> you can't. It's... Uh, I, I've used the, the thing, the big lie is ending here. And CNN steals it, and of course they use it against Trump, and or the January 6th crap or whatever. But 
it really does feel like we are coming in, whether whether we want to accept the wording of a new age or a reset, it seems like we're coming in, but at least there's been resistance to the 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 World Economic Forum. Um, I, I, I don't want to swear or call them a name, but the, these guys just seem to be totally gone, wrapped in the old world, that, that we are merely peasants or, or even worse mm-hmm. under their feet. Yes. And, oh, yeah. and the funny thing is, is that, well, you're going to slip on that. Yeah, just like the, their, their complete contempt for us is showing. I mean, when you look at somebody like AOC, you can tell she despises us. All of them do. Her and, you know, all the rest of them, they have no use for us whatsoever. Not even talk about not hiding it anymore. Well, this, is the, this is the funny part. We actually got no use for them. Well... Absolutely. And when people who you start trust. waking up, they realise, hang on, we don't need you anymore. I heard, yeah, so, and they, they were, can't find the, their centres at the bottom of the rung, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because um, yeah. when I heard people describe their centre, it's always from the upper part of their body, right? Their centres from the lower part of their body. That's where they find their centre, totally opposite to us. Um and it shows. So, but I don't like feeding them energy. It wasn't commercial like that, Luna, and it shows. <laughs> I don't know. It was there? <laughs> yeah, what? What? Brene, what was that commercial? And it shows. Yeah, and it shows. We we care, and it shows. Or something. I, I, Is that I, it? Like soap <laughs> or something? Yeah. So I can't remember exactly, but. Luna triggered me on it. <laughs> Some will find it eventually. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> oh, and, and it shows. Well, and it that's... really is. It, it, it is all sauce. Just putting it on. I mean, it's... It, it, yeah. <laughs> I got to laugh because it, if, if you have any critical thinking, and you, you said that to me, Sean, a while back, that maybe it's just because of where I was born and how, how you know, my circumstances of upbringing. Uh, but you, you, you were born with some critical thinking, I believe. As a kid, you got it. You, you know what to do. And then I think it's beaten out of you in the, in the system. And I, I guess I've been lucky enough to survive this long and still have it. So it, it does show. When, when something just does not fit, you, you can't use it. You can't use it as part of the plan, except when you're going to gaslight and bullshit. Yeah. And that's what we're yeah. seeing. Yeah. We've seen a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that word care, that triggers me because it comes from a government agent or a, a government establishment. This is what care means to them. Care about retaining employment. C A R E. So beware of that mm-hmm. key word. Mm-hmm. I care about you because I get paid really good. I was going to say, yeah, they care about themselves. Yeah. But I, I imagine being a person like that. I imagine being a person like that. I've got this top paying job. But it's, care, it's mm-hmm. caring about people in a false way because I'm only doing it for the money, right? Where's the center of that person? Certainly not in their bloody heart. <laughs> in their wallet. No. It's the, not in their job. On the outside okay. of their skin, maybe, is where their center is. Oh, no, maybe that's why it's going to be much harder for us to, I'll speak the I word here, much harder for me to tolerate some of the junk because the more that I'm required be in my center to, to actually get through my day, the less tolerance and patience I have for the Wokies. Yep. Um, I, I can tell you, you guys, I have so much less every day. Every day I have less. I avoid people that I just think are just so 
deep in their wokeness, I can't tolerate it anymore. Oh, I can't it, even that it. was. I want to throw up. I experienced a lot of that when I was a when I was working at Starbucks and yeah, shipping oh yeah. yeah, definitely it, it has helped so much to not be in that environment. Right. Yeah. That's the heart of wokeness, practically. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's and it, it jewels. It's interesting. They're running out of um, product. I don't know if you know that. What kind of product? I have. They're running. They're they're, they're running out of vanilla. They're running out of mocha. They're running out of things to make their coffees. Oh, it's hilarious! Radically, locations are closed. Here. Yeah. They put all of the mom and pop coffee shops out of so Luna when they showed up they put all the mom and pop sh coffee shops out of business. So that, that was their business. Oh model. yes, I get it. They would, yep. they would open up a shop yep. blocks away or a block away from a mom and pop and put the mom and pop out. Now, you now what is that? What is that? Something uh, something is turnaround. Oh, something fair play is turnaround or whatever. However you say that, fair play turnaround is fair play or whatever. Well, now they're going to get their butts kicked, Jules. That's what I think. I went. I heard a story. They're out of mocha <laughs> today. I went. I went to one. They're out of vanilla. So they're running out of what's happening, Luna, in America for the first time. For us, we're running out of stuff. You'll go to a store, and the product you're looking for is not there. They don't have it. They're out of it. And so now, if you go to Starbucks, and the Starbucks coffee is now six bucks or five five fifty. It's not even affordable. A friend of mine went, I caught up with him last weekend, and he sent me a message, and he's like, iced coffee at Starbucks, a venti iced coffee. Just I, just coffee and ice and a little bit of cream, $4.31. Yes. But their Mocha's wokeness are six bucks. What, what are their wokeness crying about? This is their... This is their pride and joy of being superior to everyone else and only drinking mm. certain products. Mm. They that is theirs. Not mine. Give me a black coffee. Or my their, their superiority is going to disappear because they're running out of product. It's in some ways, hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to digress, but it was interesting. That's all right. All right. What I was inferring, Sharon, was that their own crowd is going to eat them alive. It will. Exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. Well, eat their employees alive because they're, mm -hmm. gonna just, they're just management behind a computer screen. There's, there's no effective management there. The, I mean, well, their, their business model now, their supply chain... And not even and the issues with coffee. I saw that coming two years ago when all those crops over in Africa were decimated, and then they migrated over to to Asia, where other coffee crops are, and all the volcanoes and everything in Hawaii. Now with the weather there, that destroyed a lot of their crops. Not not many coffee comes from that region, but a good port, a good about. 15 to 25 percent comes from that area any given harvest season yeah. it'd be a very interesting couple of years coming up on many many uh businesses yeah i mean right now latin and south america is, a, is the world's most most coffee producing area right. Anyway, I didn't mean to, to get us off topic, but oh, no. part of it is we are talking about being centered and maybe part of all that is, you know, where you come from, even in your business, you know, where, where is your heart and your soul in your business? And so as we talk about this, Luna, will, will universe only start to support businesses that come from their heart center i'd like to think so <laughs> and what i'm seeing yeah. yeah a lot of people for on this reality in here in australia 
Some people have lost their businesses, but the people we're speaking to, the good people, they actually care, really care about their people that work for them and their small businesses. They seem to miraculously be surviving. So I'd have to say yes there, Sharon, when I think about some of them clients that are still doing okay. Even ourselves, it's been a bit tricky, but we're still doing okay. Um, some people, even that I know have lost their jobs, are still doing okay, miraculously. So we've been looked after. Um, I wanted to bring in another thing about staying centred. Um, if you look at tribal, traditional pictures, they've always got a circle with a dot in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, multiple circles and the, the circle in the middle is the centre circle and they always prefer to a centre somehow and what's beyond that centre awesome. Donny would be a nice time to drop in here now Donny or naysay <laughs> yeah I was just going to say you're talking naysays and Donny's lunch yeah too. And I noticed they've been sitting there real quiet, pretending that um, Auntie Luna can't see them, but I can. <laughs> and they say might have even fell asleep. So come on, Donnie, what you doing, brother? He's not. Because the centre of things to us is important in our artwork, in, when we find things on the land. Yeah, they're going to sleep, the buggers. <laughs> That's all right. But you, you fellows have seen that stuff. You've all had a look at some of the artwork, tribal artwork. There's always a centre. <coughs> and, um, yeah, traditional teachings do teach you how to balance, be, live balanced, find the centre, and through that you find harmony and connection and all those other things. And they, they all interweave, um, bring in a good life, if that's what you want. Because it's all about. Because it's all about. Here we are. Thank you, Donnie. Here we are. Thank you, Donnie. You bet me to it. Because <laughs> that's basically what I was going to say. We'll say it again in your way. Cause we'll of... say it again in your way. Cause of... <laughs> nah, no, nah, she'll be right. I'll go back in the background again. <laughs> no, come back because we can add to that, Donnie, because sometimes we have pictures where there's more than. there's two or three circles with different centres. Is that correct? Kind of. Yeah. I'm just not pitching it in the head at the moment. Luke. All right then. But you All did... right then. But you... Sorry about the echo people, but you do Sorry agree that... Sorry about the echo people, but you do agree that... Our cultural ways. Our cultural ways. Teach about being centred. Teach about being centred. Yes, it does. They speak to you in like the old people used to speak to you in like metaphors and riddles, and you had to work it out from there. And that's how I was taught. We weren't told straight, you know, straight off the bat. You do it this way, no. You listen to the story, you listen to the riddles, and you've got it interpreted your way. No, no one else's way, your way. And that's how far I, that's how I was taught. And through. So we might be just a centre of ourselves, but we also centre of our community. Yeah. Like yeah. in the mob. We might be a centre of ourselves, but once we're together, we're a centre of that community or our mob, as you want to put it that way. Is that what you're trying to explain, Luna? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and well, I'll sit in the corner again. Yeah. And we have stories that tell yeah, about we have stories that tell about creation and creation stuff and, and they use the similar and symbology, the similar and, symbology lessons. and lessons. Yeah. Okay. Um Um Naysay, are you Naysay, around? are you 
around. Yeah, he's here. I can see him. Don't tell him that. <laughs> he might have fell asleep again. Probably. That's all right. Probably. He's, fair. he's in the right. centre of himself. He's fair. He's in the centre of himself. Hmm. He's beside himself. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're in today's... Yeah. Um, we're in today's... Um, society, we do we see symbols? Society, we do we see symbols? With uh, circles with, or triangles uh, with the centre marked out. Centre marked out. Yeah. Anyone want to tackle Anyone that one? Anyone want to tackle that one? No. No, it's Sharon Will. No, it's Sharon Will. Okay, say okay, that one more time. Say that one more time, Luna. One more time, Luna. Okay, hang on. There's, there's some reverb. Yeah, I'll just fix that. Um, where in today's society do we see um, symbols and that representing the centre of things? You'll have triangles with dots in the middle or circles or words or whatever. They're out there. Companies are using them too. And what, and, um, what are they trying to tell us? Because the way we use symbology with the circle and the centre is obviously different to what they're doing today. We kind of have, kind uh, of have good, good ones and bad ones. I mean, if you look at Apple Computer, right, with the bite out of the apple, which Eve took the bite, it has a rainbow color. Um, I look at that. Um, when I think of symbols, I always wear a heart i like i like hearts on my jewelry because i feel like they haven't hijacked that one <laughs> not yet <laughs> a lot of our a lot of our symbols have been hijacked they have um and that's what i was pertaining to once the symbols were all, were all about learning for the betterment of yourself and community and the future generations but now it's different now the symbology especially the centered ones it's the centered of you in the wrong way you know um it's like they want to get into the center of you so they can corrupt it that's how it feels to me um yes and i see some of them symbols and it's like i'm not going in that building because <laughs> i know it's all upside uh, down cbs they have all seen them. I mean, it, I, I've been all the people who don't see there's not many brothers in my mind that have just the people of balance or, or being centered. Say that one more time, Jules. Well, there's a, I, and the symbolism that I that I see a lot of it. There's, I don't see many. If for balance and centered, I automatically think of the circle with the dot in the center. I don't see m much symbolism like that. But the closest thing that comes is the all-seeing eye. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I see where that. It's a neutral thing itself. I mean, it depends on how you, if you, how you look at it, how to utilize it, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. But that's the only symbol that I can that comes to mind that that even has a circle in it. And I'm not even sure if that's centered. Hmm. You know, it's funny though. There are there is some jewelry I've seen like at Macy's and other places, they have the all-seeing eye. I was just about to mention um, that. Yep, go, Sharon. And I stay away from it. The other thing I stay away from are the owls. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's owls everywhere. And I stay away from owls because I feel like the poor little owls, and I love owls, but I think they've been hijacked. The symbols have yeah. been hijacked anyway. I feel like they okay. have too. Um, 
yeah so i i just stay away from that the um like i just got a ladybug i love it i feel like they haven't messed with that little thing and like i said i have hearts most of my jewelry is hearts there's hearts of one kind or another because i feel like they haven't hijacked that but i am very well aware of any of the new world order junk bulls that they've taken over and i won't wear them I won't even get near them. And I don't know how I feel about the cross. I don't know if there are people here that feel like the cross has been hijacked. I'd love to know your feelings on that one. Um, yeah, kind of. Depends where you're coming from. I think they've all been hijacked. Hijacked, turned around and used for something they shouldn't be. Which doesn't mean that they still don't represent what they do to us like it's like um us both having a cup of water you drink yours and i throw your mine in your face do you know what i mean we both have the same cup of water and you can do whatever you want with it right. yeah and i feel that's what's right. happened with our symbols and um i feel that if you used to use symbols and you stop using them because they've hijacked them, don't. If your intentions are right and you're compelled to use them for um, to battle that or to bring forth more beautiful things, do you, you know, do whatever. As Johnny says, if it, whatever blows your hair back, if it works for you, just keep using them. Just because they hijacked them doesn't mean nothing. It's just that glass of water, you know. But, um... Anyways, I think we might... If you take some of the symbolic, like a, a cross being an antenna receiving something, or an owl's face as being a dish also to receive something, the, the, the face structure will receive um, the information because they're working at night. It's... Everything was designed to read frequency. It seems like our skull to our, um, whether you want to call it our third eye or that part of the brain, Ra's eye, down to our spine. It's all like one giant antenna. And that, But these are just my opinions, my center. Well, that's what I was about to say. Let's round this table up and, um, and yeah, let me t tell me what you feel. So thank you, Bernays. Jules, Sharon? How did you find it? Oh, definitely, I, this was very enlightening in ways. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, this was um, one of the. This is another one of those shows you really had to dig deep to yeah. get the to get the to get to the meat of a, and the heart of everything. Because even though you feel like, well, gee, that's a really easy subject, it actually goes at to the center, as it were. Yep. Yep, it sure does. When it was given to me, and I had half a dozen things, and it was that one that came out with all the questions, and I thought, "Oh, looks like that's what it is." <laughs> so that's what we got today, and I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, it definitely was a dig deep thing, but I hope you understand what the centre of you is a little more, and um, I hope that we've we've helped you to find it or stay in it stronger. Um, because we all got to keep each other strong in times like this. Um, so, yeah, stay in your centre. Uh, Love to you on this day. I'd like to thank everyone that's contributed tonight in the conversation. I'd like to thank everyone that's listened. And I'd like to thank Creator for making it all possible. And um, till next time, stay in the centre of you, be strong, and love to you on this day. Yalu. Yalu. Yeah, we'll all. See ya.